Kai Wanner, and today I want to talk about data streaming at the edge, where I will explore use cases, architectures, and examples for using Apache Kafka and Apache Flink at the edge and in hybrid architectures. First of all, we need to define what the edge actually is. You always need to define such a term. In my definition, the edge really means outside a traditional data center. You see a few examples here. So this could be a factory or a retail store or a ship or anything else where you can deploy computers that run software. And so the important question now is why would you deploy data streaming at the edge, including Apache Kafka and Apache Flink? And then maybe also how is this related to other services that are running in the cloud, like AI, which you do with big data analytics in the cloud. There's a few reasons why customers sometimes deploy at the edge. Most of them have a cloud-first strategy, but still for some workloads, the edge is the right way to go. And here are the reasons. Latency. If you have workloads where milliseconds matter, the hop to the cloud is not a good idea. We will see a few scenarios later, but this is really relevant across industries like in manufacturing, on the shop floor level, or in retail for location-based services. If you need to act quickly within a few hundred milliseconds, then it's much better to do that directly at the edge where the data is created and needed. Cost. Well, if you think about that, if you transfer all your data to the cloud and the first thing you do there is filtering and aggregating that, that does not make much sense because the data transfer cost is so high compared to pre-processing the data at the edge. And this is a very common scenario where we see hybrid architectures. Like if you have a temperature sensor, only in very rare cases you need the temperature measurement update every second and send it to the cloud. You need aggregates and you need thresholds and similar scenarios. So you can reduce cost significantly in some use cases by doing edge computing. Security, that's another critical scenario. In some verticals, you need to deploy some software in air gapped environments. And so by definition, this cannot go to the cloud or your data center then. So it needs to be air gapped and disconnected from the internet. And this is obviously then where you don't just run your equipment or other things, but also where you run your business logic and data processing. And last but not least, always on. This means that you can continuously run and operate your business even if the internet connection is lost or if it's not stable. Business continuity is super critical in some scenarios and in some industries where it really needs to run 24-7. It's not always about safety critical, but sometimes it's just about your restaurant. But if all your point of sale and credit card processing is in the cloud, you are in trouble when your internet is down for an hour. These are the four main criteria I see why the companies I talk to sometimes deploy some of the workloads to the edge. And to be very clear, it's not all of the workloads. In most cases, it's a mix of hybrid architecture where some workloads are executed at the edge and some are in the cloud or data center. So what are some concrete use cases now for Apache Kafka at the edge and then also sometimes combined with a stream processor with Apache Flink or maybe Kafka streams or something else? Well, first, it's often about infrastructure. Like you see this uh, telecommunications tower here in this picture. Such teleco towers, they're obviously at the edge and they need to process huge volumes of data. And what's better than a data streaming platform than you can deploy at the edge? In manufacturing, condition monitoring, predictive maintenance, and similar scenarios that continuously connect to a sensor data from the shop floor. You need to continuously aggregate and monitor that, or maybe even apply analytic models. A hop to the internet, to the cloud, is sometimes too slow or too costly. 
or sometimes you might even run in a regulated environment which needs to be air capped. And then on the left side, you see a few examples of all these location-based services. Sometimes it's just for making the customer happy, location-based retail services. While you walk through the store, you get new offers. This needs to work with low latency and stable 24 seven while the store is open. If you have internet issues with the Wi-Fi, then this service doesn't work well. So this needs to work so that you can send a recommendation while the customer is walking around. When the customer has left the store or even just an area in a large store, he will not come back to buy a product. And then obviously there's also much more critical software where the data communication between the different systems needs to be transferred and communicated in real time. And this is also where data streaming is a big part of. Just to be very clear here, data streaming is not about hard real time. So the safety critical logic itself, that's always embedded systems with something like Rust or C. But the connectivity between the different equipments and machines and sensors and the IT applications, that's what's very often done with data streaming. And also keep in mind again that Edge computing often is super important, but in most cases, it's a combination then of edge and hybrid, where you either unidirectionally send some of the data to the cloud for analytics, or you have bidirectional use cases where you do sometimes command and control patterns, where you send an action from the mobile app and through the cloud to the edge. It depends on the SLAs and criticality if you can or should do that. Now I want to walk you through, through a few examples. The first one a little bit more detailed with a few real world examples, retail. What you see here is a very common data streaming architecture. I will not go into much detail. You see all the events flowing in this event driven architecture. We have a lot of different interfaces, APIs and connectors, like in this case, a BI tool, a CRM system, an external payment provider, and a stream processing application for upselling. So this is typically running the cloud. And again, cloud first is a great idea. Whenever it's possible, deploy workloads in the cloud. It's easier to operate. It's easier to scale. You pay as you go. And you don't need to worry about the infrastructure. But as soon as you have one of these requirements I discussed before, like cost, latency, security, or always on, then you might consider to deploy some of these workloads at the edge. And in this case, that's a retail store. And I see more and more large retailers that have hundreds or even thousands of stores that install more and more computers in their retail stores because they have bad Wi-Fi connections. They cannot rely on the, on the cloud internet for their most critical workloads like payments, point of sale, recommendation engines, and similar. But still, you see these red arrows in the middle. This is then bidirectional and hybrid. So if we zoom a little bit deeper into that, this is now the perspective running data streaming at the edge on some industrial PCs or other computers. The big benefit is that you don't need to do the hops to the data center or cloud every time for every single event. And we are getting more and more data driven. So this is not just about the point of sale system, which you can improve from a batch upload to the cloud at the end of the day to real time communication, but it's even more about all the correlation at the edge between the different systems. Like in this case, between the local inventory management system of this specific store, combined with the data from the loyalty platform about the customer who's in the store. And by correlating that data with stream processing continuously and context specific, you can send the right recommendation to the right customer while the customer is walking through the store. In this case, only about products he's interested in, but also only if the inventory is available in that store. And this is what's much easier to do just at the edge from a latency and cost perspective. And of course, again, on the right side, we have hybrid architecture. So after the transactions and happens and you do the payment, you still update the information in your global inventory management system. This might be a much more advanced technology, like in this case, an SAP ERP like S4HANA. While locally, maybe you just have a small Java application storing the inventory in a database. So in summary, you see that the edge is important for many use cases in this example in retail. And it works even if it's disconnected. 
We have seen many examples in the past years where complete entertainment parks were shut down, where complete restaurants or stores in a complete region were shut down because everything was connected online to the cloud, where the point of sale payment processing was, where the loyalty platform was, where the inventory management was. And so even though the store was open, no customer could pay and buy a product because all the re related systems were running in the cloud. And here, you're always on because how Kafka works under the hood with its persistent log, it truly decouples the system and it's also handling the back pressure. Or in this case, it's a buffer. So it doesn't matter if you're offline. You can still execute with your connected applications at the edge. And now here's a real world example. This is from Chick-fil-A. And they had two great and interesting blog posts, which I share here, where they describe how they deploy three computers in every single food store they have. And here they do the edge computing to optimize the store supply chain about the kitchen, about the point of sale, about the customers to provide a better experience and to be more cost efficient. I highly recommend reading these blogs if you're interested in more detail. And similarly, the second example from Royal Caribbean. This is where in the end, Royal Caribbean is running a data streaming platform on every single ship because the internet connection is very bad and very expensive. And still they will need to rely on data communication on the ship because if you use your mobile app and you have to use it all the time, then you need to connect with that to the restaurant for the seat reservation. In the back end, they need to check the inventory. You need to do the payment. All of that need to happen without connectivity to the internet. So it's always on, even though it's offline. And then when these ships go back to the harbor after a few days, then you can do replication to the cloud in a very fast way because you have a stable connection when you're in the harbor. So this is a perfect example of edge that is needed sometimes for the critical workloads. But then also, of course, how it's complementary to the big data analytics in the cloud, where you can ingest all the data from all the ships after each journey. So also take a look at this again. And you see here, this presentation was from 2019. So this is not something really new. This exists for many, many years already at some customers and end users. But still, um, most people are just getting started thinking about hybrid architectures with data streaming in the cloud and at the edge. And just to complete this, a few other examples from other industries, like in manufacturing, I already talked about condition monitoring and predictive maintenance. Here's an example where Kafka is used to build an open and scalable data historian. And I've also seen people building cloud native SCADA systems. In the end, the goal is to replace or complement existing proprietary and monolithic systems that are not open, that do not scale that are not extendable. Data streaming is perfect here because it's combination of real-time messaging at scale and a persistent commit log for true decoupling and handling the back pressure. This is the perfect foundation for building a hybrid architecture, like in this picture, where you can choose per use case how you connect to the systems. Maybe still with the existing application that you already have for the last mile OT integration. Maybe you use an open standards like MQTT or OPCOA, then you can directly connect from Kafka much easier. And the same for the data processing. For some of the workloads, maybe you still use your existing industrial software for that. Maybe if you build something new, you choose an open framework like Apache Flink or Kafka Streams for that. And then one more time, of course, you also have the connection to the cloud to replicate some of the data, but typically not all of the data to the cloud from all the different factories. And the last example is about transportation. And in the end, in this case, about improving the customer experience. In a similar way, like if you're on a train, it does not make any sense if every customer uses the bad network to the cloud to check the next train connection or train delays. If you get the train delays once from the cloud, store it on your commit log on the train, then every customer can consume it from here. This is much more efficient much more stable and it costs less. And so you get a much better customer experience, even for these basic use cases like the up-to-date train schedule. 
And then obviously you can also build much more advanced use cases if you want to connect with gaming environments or something like that. So the options are in the end endless, but in the same way, this is always on, even if you're offline. And it's also much more cost efficient. And also last but not least, in some scenarios, you might even just use one Kafka broker. So on a train, maybe you don't deploy a distributed system, but only one broker on one computer. This still works well. It's not highly available. But then if this broker fails, well, then maybe you need to connect again to the internet to see the train schedule update. But if it works 99.99 on one broker, that's a much better customer experience and still very cost efficient. So I hope these examples and use cases with an architecture behind it helped you understanding why more and more people across industries think about using data streaming with Kafka and Flink at the edge and very often then in hybrid scenarios. If you have any thoughts or feedback, feel free to comment on the video or reach out and follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn and stay in touch. Thanks a lot for watching.